Yeah, good morning, everyone. Okay, last class we have completed data types chapter. As part of data types, we have discussed how to create, uh, you know, how to, okay, what are the different data types available in Java we learn? And uh, what is the purpose of each data type we have learned? And also we discussed difference between Java data types and C data types also we have learned. And also we discussed, okay, when to use uh, int, when to use long, when to use double, uh, when to use char, when to use uh, what you call a boolean, when to use a string also we discussed. And if you remember, we also learn why we have additional data types like um, what you call a short, byte, short, and float for storing data types also we discussed. And we discussed, okay, uh, as part of our regular programming, we don't use what you call byte short data types, okay? And float data types, we don't use in the regular programming. In regular programming, we will use int for storing regular integers, long for storing large numbers, floating point numbers to store double, we will use VLAN. And what the purpose of other data types and everything we have already learned, that's good. Okay, then next. And also we have learned, uh, you know, how to, I mean, what is the problem with primitive data type variables and how to solve that problem by using arrays also we learn. And then following by, we also learn what is the problem of array? What is the problem of array and uh, how the problem is solved by using class we learn. Also, we discussed what, why class is called user defined data type, right? Why class is called user defined data type also we have discussed. And then next, uh, also we learn how to create our own user defined data type using class keyword for storing different type of values also we learn. And also I taught you how to create real world objects in the programming world. Okay, what is class, what is object, what is instance and the procedure to create real world object in the programming world. We have learned everything clearly. So with this knowledge, now I'm moving to the next topic that is reading runtime values from keyboard. You know, whenever we define a variable, we need to store value in that variable. Then there are two ways of storing values in the variable. Number one, hard coded way. Number two, soft coded way. Hard coded way means, okay, now let me take one small example. You will understand it. Look at here. I define a class called addition. In this addition class, main method, we have three variables I created, A, B, C. Tell me what is the C value? C value is a dynamic. It depending on C value is dynamic. It is depending on uh, what you call, depending on the expression result, we are going to get value. Okay. All are getting my voice. All are getting my voice. Yeah. So now here, if you observe this program in class edition, I have two variables I created AB. Now this AB variable value is what fixed. In the program development time, I have assigned value 1020 here. Then I run this edition class 100 times. All 100 times the edition program executed with value 10 and 20 only. First time I execute, second time I execute, third time I execute, any number of times I execute, it is always executed with the value 10 and 20 only. Let me show you that point so that you will get to understand more. Okay, look at there. I defined the program. So class addition main method int a equal to some value 10 and int b equal to 20, int c equal to a plus b result. Right? So I repeating once again we are trying to understand the chapter called reading runtime values. Okay, reading RRV means reading runtime values in Java. In every language, we have reading runtime values from the keyboard dynamic values. Java also supporting how to read values from keyboard dynamically. Okay, how many, once you create variables, we can assign the values to these variables. We can store value in this variable two ways. Number one, hard coded way. Number two, soft coded way hard coded way and dynamic way, static way, dynamic way. So first I wanted to teach you, okay, this is our regular programming until last chapter we are doing. So int a equal to 10, int b equal to 20, we have assigned, int c equal to a plus b. C value is always a dynamic, C value we cannot decide based on A value, B value, its value changing. But now A value always 10, B value always 20 because at the time of developing this program, I have specified value in the program. Okay, save it, go to command prompt, 
I'm open command prompt. I want run from command prompt. Open command prompt, clear screen. I am hiding this entire path, okay? I'm hiding this entire path, path RRV colon. I wanted to show you this. RRV means reading runtime values from the keyboard. Okay, then now here I am trying to execute this class. Okay, let me keep all these things side by side so that you can see what is happening background in the folder also. Uh, Java C edition one dot Java program compiled. Uh, look at there dot class file created with the name edition one dot class. Now I am running Java edition one. Any number of times I execute, again execute, again execute, again execute, again execute, again execute, again execute. Any number of times you execute, the values are coming what? 30, 30, 30, 30 only. Now I wanted to add different values. For adding different values, what you need to do? I must open this Java file. Okay, I must open this Java file again, and then I should go to the code in TA place. If whatever the values you wanted to add, that value 30 and that value 40, you need to write, save it, then come to command prompt, uh, clear screen, Java C edition one dot Java compile. Again, you should recompile. Okay, and then you should execute Java edition one. Again, you should execute, right? Now look at the result I'm getting 70. Modified values are working now. 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70. Hey, I don't want 70. I want new values. But then what again? Again, I need to do. Again, I should go to this code. Again, I should modify values. Tell me, is it a, is it a feasible? I mean, is a good approach of modifying the value every time? Come on, come on. Is it a good approach of every time modifying the value? As a programmer, you can modify, but you are writing program not for your sake. You are writing program for end user, customer sake. For example, now I want you to understand website. Okay, I'm taking some website, let's say paytm.com. Okay, I'm taking paytm.com. In paytm.com, did you observe? This is a project, like our edition, edition program, this is a project. In this project, now it is given for recharging your mobile. Then tell me, this project is asking you to enter mobile number, operator, and amount. Na? Then it is this, this entire project background is working with the values you have given. It is not working with the values hard coded. Right. So now if I give my number 9010454584, are you catching my point? Then what happened? Now uh, this, this number, this number is automatically taken by this project and working for this project. If you take some other number, 9866979432, okay, then it is an ATL number, right? So it is changing, right? Are you catching my point? All right, if you take some other number, some other number, 944. 944, okay, 944, 184, 184, 522. Something if you take, okay, it is a VSNL number. Everybody following my point? So now time to time, time to time, what happened? Time to time, what happened? Whenever I give a new value, accordingly, the program is running. So tell me which type of application are expecting to develop? Do you want static values program or you want a dynamic values program you want a hard coded values program or you want a runtime values program which type of program we need to develop we need to develop dynamic values program tell me is this is this dynamic values program or static values program it is a static values program right because i hard coded value i specify value then tell me what i need to do like how ptm.com like how ptm.com reading the values from the end user from the keyboard like how values are reading from the keyboard. Same way, our program also should read values from where? Keyboard. Should not mention the values here. So what are you learning in this chapter? In this chapter, you are learning different ways of reading values from the keyboard. In C language, you read value by using scan of. In C, C++, you read value by using C in, right? C in, you are going to read. In Java, how can I read? Okay, that's what we are learning in this chapter. All you people got clarity, huh? What you are learning in this chapter, need of this chapter, all the people got clarity? Now try to answer this slide, try to understand this slide now. Reading runtime values, need of this chapter. Up to now we have developed a program or a project by hard coding values directly in the variable assignment. Hard coding means directly we specify values there. Okay, then next. Now, the, for example, I'm taking class edition mathematical program, int a equal to 10, int b equal to 20, int c equal to a plus b. Now, always it adds only 10 and 20 values. 
if you take our real time example business example yesterday program i create a student s1 equal new student now i have assigned the values to the student object remember s1 dot snvo equal to 101 s1 dot s name equal to hk s1 dot course cj s1 dot fee 1000 tell me if i run this college class 1000 times then 1000 student objects created who is that 1000 student object same student hk only then always it creates the student hk only but not different different students and then tell me the problem in this approach is the program is always executed with the same values we cannot change those values uh, we cannot change those values at execution time without modifying and recompiling the code as a customer i can do it but as a program i mean as a programmer i can do it as a customer as a end user he cannot do that then what is the solution to this problem uh, solution to this problem we have to develop reading runtime values chapter not not tomorrow no, today only we will see that so if you got clarity if you got need of this chapter then i will launch this chapter can you please confirm all the people comfortable yeah so i'm moving to the next points so reading runtime values from keyboard from end user this is our chapter name hard coding values in the program means directly typing values in the program while developing and having values in the dot class file while compilation time is a bad idea okay right so either in mathematical application or in uh, business application is a bad idea because same values will be there in always calculation time same values there in always program development time it is a wrong approach what is the right approach we must read values from the end user from the keyboard at program execution time so in this chapter we are learning first what is a hard coded values and what is a hard coded value and hard coded application what is runtime value and runtime values application problems with hard coded application and advantages with runtime values application next different ways to read values from the read runtime values from the keyboard right from command line from using buffer reader using scanner using console using system using awt swing and using java fx okay there are several approaches are there actually there are two ways of reading values from the keyboard cui based and gui based okay so this these are three five approaches are cui based means there is no window from the command prompt only we are reading the value there is no window now this is a gui based <coughs> 
okay this is gui based what is the meaning of gui you will have separate window you will get separate window i uh, let me give an example yeah now open command prompt okay sorry open calculator then look at this calculator is not a cui based this calculator is gui based are why it is not working yeah so this calculator is gui based look at there a separate window came with the buttons and check boxes and everything so this is what gui based hope you understand and now i will teach you both how to develop cui based applications and how to develop gui based application old style is awt next to awt latest style is swing next to swing now latest style is java fx okay so there are three ways of developing gui application we will try to understand all approaches okay then now finally now right so now first let us try to understand from command line arguments application how can i do that okay now look at there first i want to understand what is hard coded application you know already understood uh, now these values are called hard coded values 10 and 20 are called hard coded values and uh, and uh, this application this addition program is called hard coded application read the definitions the values those are directly specified in a program to store in variables or for performing calculation then those values are technically called hard coded values or okay, come again come again the values those are directly specified in a program directly specified in a program to store in variables or for performing calculations validations then those values are technically called hard coded values the application that contains values specified directly in this source code to perform validations and calculations is called hard coded application right so hope you got clarity on this this pro these values are hard coded values and this program is called hard coded application then the hard coded values are also called as static values why they are called static values at run time we are not changing the values right at run time we cannot replace i don't say change change is different replace is different 10 to 20 i cannot do any changes so program is continuously run with the 10 only okay through program int a equal to 10 a equal to 20 i can do that through program i can do it but from the keyboard at run time i cannot to do any changes that is called what static static value fixed value is different static value equal to 10 then is always fixed that 10 you can read from keyboard or you can hard code okay right so static value means the value we specified in the program later during execution we cannot change the value from keyboard next the hard coded application is also called as static application because at this at, at this program execution time we cannot change values to another values by reading values from keyboard okay na right so this is the basic idea about hard coded values and hard coded application hope you got clarity then next problem with the hard coded application can you try we cannot change values at execution time hence this application can be executed only with the same values specified in the program second for example consider evo class addition it will also execute with the same values 10 and 20 next if you want to change values we must modify values in source code then we must recompile and execute this class second problem first problem we cannot change values at execution time second problem if you want to change values we must modify values in source code then we must recompile and execute this class every time as a programmer we can do it but for an end user it is very tough modifying java code every time it is not recommended to develop hard coded application in project we must read and substitute end user values at run time are a second problem try to understand other biggest problem is if you develop hard coded application let me give you an let me give you a small idea so that you will enjoy you know if you take atm machine this is my atm machine visualize 
now i i i i entered into atm machine to take my atm atm center to take my to withdraw some money now this atm machine is hard coded application let's say hard coded software it has say then he has to go to back side of this atm machine open that uh, some some uh, door and there some uh, screen is there to enter my values i have removed that values and i entered my account number my pin number and then my amount to withdraw then i close the door come back and press the button here what is the always our worry take the money and go na many times we forgot our atm card that's why atm machines nowadays you know insert card option is not there swipe card option is there because customers are forgetting to take the card so then you take money and left now the next customer who is there he come to the atm machine and just for testing he press the button then what happened tell me uh, whatever the money you specified here from your account it will start withdraw money to all customers na then finally your account is closed become zero uh, now tell me what is the problem here did you notice what the problem here did you notice one customer values can be used by another customer one customer values misused by another customer there is a chance you may forget to remove them so in real time hard coded application is the most dangerous application it is not at all recommended so what are the three problems working with a hard coded application we cannot change values at execution time every time we must modify code recompile and third one program one customer values may misuse by another customer values hence it is not recommended then what to do i must read the values from keyboard from end user execute the logic with those values after result is displayed tell me those values still there in the program or loss all values are lost again it become empty then second customer is coming again this program asking second customer are enter your values then he is entering his values and executing logic for him everybody got clarity yeah so this is the way you need to develop in above program we have not specified values in the source code in development time hence it can be executed with any given new values without modifying code and without mis misusing one customer values to another customer earlier the values are stored in the program whereas now the values are not storing in the program once program execution completed the given values are destroyed hence what runtime values and runtime values application means what the value that is reading from end user and substituting in a program at execution time is called runtime value a value that reading from end user and substituting in the program executing logic with that values is called runtime value the application that executes logic by reading values from end user from keyboard is called runtime application runtime values are also called as a dynamic values runtime application is also called as a dynamic application dynamic means at runtime anything is coming that is called dynamic because this application work with user given values are dynamical at execution time this application is called dynamic application what are the advantages of runtime or dynamic application it can be executed with any given new values no need to recompile for changing the values one user values are not misplaced with other user values it is always recommended to develop runtime application in the project all real time projects you are using daily or runtime application just observe once hope you all got clarity on this what is hard coded application what is hard coded value hard coded application what is runtime value runtime application what are the problems with hard coded application what are the advantages with runtime application got clarity yeah? okay now tell me what is our target now we need to read values from the keyboard what is the target we need to read values from the keyboard that is the target right so to read values from keyboard how many approaches we have look at here uh, okay i'll come to this one later okay we need to learn just three points here i want to read values from the keyboard okay now look at here 
uh, let me take real time example i have developed my application that is there in the server computer somewhere in the world in that server computer i wanted to register students okay let me take naresh shetty website for you clarity okay so that it will be easy for you to understand naresh shetty website i am i want to take naresh shetty.com open naresh shetty.com i just wanted to develop this naresh shetty.com in our class uh new batches hyderabad look at your registration register for course uh, can you apply this one look at the register for course this is the form open mm. yeah look at there this form whatever you are seeing front end background of this form background of this form we have server in that server we have student object initially with values or without values and uh, now this is student server object already in naresh it website is ready running now this naresh it website background contain one student object created because object oriented programming huh? now you have given one application form here now in this application form you are filling first name hari last name krishna okay and then here email java hari krishna at the rate gmail dot com and then phone number nine zero one zero four five four five eight four mode of training online training state telangana course i want selecting java something and then there is a button called click the moment i click on submit button the moment i click on submit button all these values are sending to this application and storing in their respective variables everybody got clarity yeah? now this website is opened somewhere in the world by other student let's say other student again open let's say then for other student again it is a empty application form na arbaje it is again it is a empty application form okay now for him again one new student object background created na another new student object should create background and he is entering his own values nothing but balai babu values then another another student came balai babu then balai babu values are entered balai babu values are entered balai babu values are stored here now hari krishna bala krishna are the two students there in naresh shet uh, tell me when when hari krishna is joined in the naresh id institute id card and receipt receipt and id card will be given on your name if balai babu joined with balai babu values receipt is generated and id card is generated everybody got clarity yeah? so tell me this application this naresh it website application is a static application or dynamic application it is a dynamic application do you want to develop this type of application in java this naresh it website developed in which language i don't know least bother but i want you develop this project in java are you ready that is what your this chapter okay this chapter is meant for developing this dynamic application uh, now tell me what are the steps we need to do in developing real world object when i run java college when i open when i run this website this website is nothing but java college first step what happen create student new instance read values from end user store all those values in above student instance 
read and display values from the student instance that is our target in this project okay for that what are the steps i need to do creating new instance uh, there is no problem you know it now the problem is reading values from end user first question you need to understand are this is my program ravi okay this is my program try to understand this open uh, command prompt i mean uh, now this is my program paint paint this is paint uh, assume that this is our program our program class edition public static void main of psv ante public static void okay shortcut i am writing string array arcs open bracket close bracket then tell me here i have variable int a equal to int b equal to int c equal to a plus b system dot outer print ln i am writing shortcut as op ln okay c this is our program then tell me now my target is what i want this edition program as runtime application what the meaning of runtime application here mr end user there sit on chair okay and then this is a command prompt in command prompt window now is running java edition okay when you run java edition control will go from here to control will go here to edition class main method now edition class main method in return should ask him are chitti enter first number enter second number take your result okay enter first number 10 enter second number let's say he enter 20 and then program execute result is 30 come so in order to read value from command prompt from end user what are the steps i need to write code just there are three steps are there buddy just three steps step number 1 first i must connect to keyboard na first i need to connect to keyboard from java program okay first we need to connect to the keyboard second after connecting to keyboard we should know uh, first how to connect to keyboard you should learn after connecting to keyboard you should learn how to read values from keyboard you should learn after connecting how to read okay try to understand very important whenever you are reading values from the keyboard you entered value 10 na this 10 is looking like a 10 no 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 any value you entered from the keyboard and passing to our program that value is coming as a string very very important point remember the value always coming from the keyboard to java program as a string double quotes 10 double quotes 20 so tell me double quotes 10 can i store in a variable no because double quotes 10 is what it is a string string cannot be stored in int variable na compiler throw error now now what is the third step i need to learn how to convert primitive values pv means primitive values primitive value from string format to string format to its own form okay string format to its own type let's say string format to its own type how to convert primitive value from string format to its own type if you learn these three points that's all reading runtime values from the keyboard is completed hope you all understand okay how can we convert first you need to learn how to connect to keyboard then how can we read values from keyboard how can we read values in their original type if you learn these three topics now the story is completed everybody got clarity abuji <clears throat> students who are listening from the youtube live did you understand what i am trying to teach today class is what yeah this class will go for uh four days yeah 
3 to 4 days okay this class will go for 3 to 4 days expecting all the people continue this 3 to 4 days youtube live this complete chapter i will give you youtube live requesting all you to follow Okay, now shall we understand how to connect to a keyboard? How to how can we connect to a keyboard? Okay, so let us try to see how to connect to a keyboard. Right, how to connect to a keyboard? Yeah, simple here. Java supports seven ways to connect to a keyboard and read values from end user from keyboard. Actually, there are nine ways. Okay, not four ways. Actually, nine ways are there. Okay, now actually nine ways are there. Two ways are deprecated. So that the two ways before buffer reader, you should also learn system dot in by using system dot in. Okay, let me let me update it. Okay, no problem. I want to teach all approaches. Let me update. Actually, they are deprecated approaches. So I just men not mention here. Let me also update. I already I I will teach them, but I don't uh, mention that here. Okay, no problem. Let me update. by using system dot in next by using uh, data input stream by using system dot in by using data input stream these two approaches also we will use these are deprecated actually but still i will teach you why they are deprecated the problems everything i will teach you deprecated means not in use they are not good to use they are creating some problems so recommending not to use okay in c plus c how many ways are there only two ways in c language we have only two ways first way is using command line arguments Second way is uh, scanf. 
C++ also we have two ways: command line argument and C C in. But in Java we have command line and all these approaches. Okay, so we need to learn all these approaches. Now let's start working with the command line arguments. Reading runtime values from command line. Are you ready, na? <laughs> Reading runtime values from command line. Yeah. Uh, Okay, I will explain on Monday. Okay, we will try to understand all these approaches: how to read command line arguments, system dot in, data input stream, buffer reader, scanner. All these, all these remaining things, we'll discuss on Monday class. We will continue on Monday. So today, I'm going to stop session here. Onwards, class will be one and a half hour, nine thirty to eleven. Okay, now nine thirty to eleven, we have class. And uh, Monday we'll start learning reading runtime values from command line. Okay, uh, what is command line? What is command line arguments? Command line arguments application. Command line arguments passed in Java application. How can we are passed? How how they are reading? How to convert passed argument its type? Okay, we need to learn. So you know if I start this now we cannot complete. Okay, in the middle I have to stop because these many points we discussed and program in it right continuity is missing so we'll start understanding these points on monday class hope you understand today class so with this topic we'll start monday okay all these points are there in the material i hope you are following the material jerax material number 2 jerax material number 2 last chapter page number 86 whatever i have explained slides each slide is is there same points are there just notes material everything is from the from this only okay whatever i have typed there same thing i have written okay na page number yeah 86 87 two pages we have learned all two pages are there clearly to learn command line arguments application wise reading and interview point of view that is very very important smriti gopi why you are asking me to give the overview already videos are there na do you are you expecting something else i will teach other than video you didn't watch videos can you please tell me do you want to have time to read video to watch video and then what do you want i don't understand it background students one way non it background students another way i teach what do you want me to explain again i don't understand why you want waste time again in the class do you have any doubts ask me but dear i will explain you don't expect me to again explain If you have any doubts, please ask. Express your doubts. Pranati, this material is there. Contact your administrator. He will share you.
okay so hope you understand today class thank you so much and in coming classes i mean we'll try start understanding all these points okay thank you all so tomorrow whatever we discussed up to now all points you try to revise sunday is a revision day sunday is not a rest day don't take rest data type chapter and uh, you know i teach you student you try to develop employee you try to develop bank account you try to develop laptop you try to develop uh, you know that ptm ptm object you try to develop okay tomorrow saturday na hey tomorrow saturday na friday hey, babu smriti oh my god is it okay for you tomorrow sunday na na where are you okay fine thank you see you on monday people who missed yesterday class is that video i have already explained is there if you want you can watch yesterday class video is this already there in our youtube table looks nice na no? choice kiski hai hmm? yeah okay. yeah renting from furling was here right okay. right hmm 7.99 per month hai